Just tell me if I'm sounding like an idiot. <laughs> I don't know what I just said. <laughs> um, you're saying Sam is making some high variance decisions? No, I mean that, that 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 deciding to raise there, he was like, well, I should probably fold, like you were saying, but instead he... Uh, maybe it's a little bit high variance. That's not that high variance. Like if he were to shove, it'd be fairly high variance. And here he's slow playing. And slow playing is fairly high variance here, right? Uh, or actually, just so standard. I think it's pretty standard. I mean, Ace is just such a monster right now. And then uh, Matt's almost always going to see that just as he did. Now that you've turned your two aces into three, and it's really hard to imagine getting on by fast playing these. You, you, you just have to call, right? Yeah. And, and just hope that maybe call. you can get some kind of bed in on the river or something. Yeah, uh, be looking for Matt to run some kind of bluff. <laughs> He's got three aces. Check. He's got three aces. That feels pretty good. From from Franklin's point of view, though, uh, wh what is Trickett's range here besides the, the, the three aces, which is sort of a very narrow part of it? Um, Trickett can have, like... 8x, uh, king x. I suppose what Franklin is thinking, he's thinking Trickett calls, uh, uh, he shoves his aces to a min raise. He really should too, shouldn't he? I mean, it's so, it would be really awk odd for Sam to have ace anything right now. Yeah. You know, he might not even slow play ace king. In fact, he probably wouldn't. And if Trickett does call here, does he check the river? Is that the whole, is that part of the whole plan? Yeah, he's checking the river, that's for sure. He's just trying to give Franklin some rope so that he'll uh, shove the river's bluff. I guess this is just going to call as well. He's got a good awareness, Sam Trickett, because this is the only way he's getting on. He seems to know overall it's the best. And how often are you shoving if you're Franklin here? Well, I'd be pretty concerned when uh, uh, Sam calls a turn. I'd have to decide whether he's calling uh, light with kings or aces. Um, the fact that there's a backdoor flush draw makes the shove a bit better because now Sam can fold some backdoor flush draws. Um, I mean, I, it would just be mostly a matter of how often do I think he's turning up with, like, king x he folds or row with. Uh, and your experience, does, you know, at, at this stage, is, is, is Sam going to fold the king? If he's called this far with a king king 10 type hand, is he, is he folding? Um, not necessarily, but a lot of, a lot of players, I think, will end up folding if, they're, if they get there with king x. Cool. Cool. He's got him! He went for it! Look at that! Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Franklin <laughs> knows, I mean, you know, this can, ha this can happen. Point out Sam showed a um, just final tape of the Irish Open last week. Oh, uh, I was there right? myself. He was. Yeah, he finished in sixth or seventh place. Uh, went into that final table pretty short, but he played well, picked his spots. Um, couldn't really get anything going, but he never had that many chips. You kids are much table. better. I'm just. Uh, but I saw I've right now. seen Andy Black here uh, at the end of the final table. That is well. A bunch of people came over, but those who have played the Irish Open before, it's. It's not an easy tournament to final table. You yeah. have to go through a lot. I actually flew over here with Sam just a couple of days ago directly from Dublin. Just in every hand. Oh. Yeah, was, yeah. He, was he in good form in a sense? Is he yeah, I mean, he came into that table short. In fact, I think he was the, the shortest, if not the second shortest stack. So uh, he finished in like sixth or so. And after, wasn't exp it was hard for him to make anything happen. So this pot opened by Torelli and three bet by Duhamel, and you know it's. And I know Duhamel's ahead, but it's really the same hand, isn't it? So it's really going to be a question of who takes the lead here for you. Uh, and uh, John has the lead right now, but 
It's a lot of flops where they both miss, and anyone who bets will take it down. This is, not, however, oh, not geez. one of them. It's not the same hand at this, all. This is a flop where they can get all of their money in uh, right now. Top two versus top pair in a nut flush draw. They both have absolute monster hands. Hamel happens to be way ahead here only because uh, Alex, both ace and six, is no good here. It's, that's pretty unlikely, and he's only drawing to the flush. Yeah, well, in a sense, Torelli's unlucky because in no way can he believe that he's a two to one underdog in this pot. But uh, this could be a really big pot depending on what Torelli does here, whether he decides to call here or if he decides to raise. Uh, that'll dictate the, what could be uh, the biggest pot we've had so far. And just think this through with me if you're Torelli. Uh, if you do raise there, you know, do you never get action except from a bigger ace, perhaps? So is that why he's chosen to call, or is yeah, he just being deceptive? Then you also build a pot for when you hit your tennis page in the turn there. Uh, but, I mean, it's really lucky for Duhamel that, that Torelli decided to just flat, and uh, John will put uh, Torelli on a lot of flush draws here. He could potentially check this back here um, and then reevaluate in the river depending on uh, what Alec does. I hope that John can check back here and then call Torelli's bet on the river. Because it puts him in a bad spot if he bets here and then Torelli check raises him. Yeah, but I mean, really, is Torelli, is that, Torelli's range is a lot more than Right, oh, draws. absolutely. I mean, he, has like, aces, he, has, he has aces here all the time, like uh, the ace jacks and ace queens. Um, also ace tens. Uh, four flushes. But that, his range is... Uh, usually going to be a, a big ace here or, a, or now a made flush. Being that Torelli has the ace of spades, you know, it, you know, he must be thinking that Duhamel <laughs> is buffing. Right. I mean, what, what has he got? There's, right. What does he value betting so, so here? So that's, that's why we might see a, uh, a, a call. call. A call, a call and a check on the river as well? Definitely possible. Cool. Yep. He has gone for the call. This pot's really big, and... And I wonder if Alec checks it again, if John is going to bet for value. If, if, if it's a non-spade, I think John will bet for value. He probably puts Alec on a hand like ace-jack or ace-queen with maybe a spade along with it at this point. Check. I think John is going to put in another bet here. There's no reason for John to think that he doesn't have the best hand. And this is why Torelli's checking. Torelli's checking because in his mind, Duhamel has to be bluffing such right. a high percentage. He's not checking because he thinks John has aces up here. He's checking because he thinks John has nothing and needs to bluff to win it. Cole, Cole, Cole. You look at a and John is going to bet for value, and he's going to be very surprised when he's check raised here. Well, Duhamel's only got just over a pot. You know, he's got 26 back, <laughs> Duhamel. Torelli's got more. Yeah, so if John makes any size, we'll bet here he's committing his stack. Right, he, he, he almost... He's, and, and Torelli's definitely going to move all in. I think that's about 14 or 15. It, I mean, it looks like... Yeah, John basically bet half of, his, half of his I stack. And now Alec right. moves all in, and uh, this would be really tough for John to get away from here because he's just committed so much. Yeah, he just didn't even think about it in calls. They'll have to count these down, but it looks like Duhamel has been broken in this pot by Alec Torelli. What a cooler. I mean, what a complete and utter cooler. Uh, Duhamel knows it. I think the, the only way he could have prevented that is if he checked back one of the streets. He could have uh, he could have checked back the turn and then just called on the river. But it's, it's, it was really uh, Alec played the hand really sneaky, and uh, I totally understand why John would think his ace is up. And it's really a good idea with Juan sitting in the big blind. <laughs> Tony G's got the kings again. Unbelievable. Um, I mean, kings, kings. Yeah, somebody's gonna slip up. Somebody is bound to slip up. Yeah, I don't see anybody slipping up here. Nobody has anything. And this is going to be very frustrating for Tony G. Well, I take it back. Patrick, we've seen him make some moves with ace fours already. That's one of the hands he likes to play. What kind of history do Patrick and Tony G have, I wonder? Obviously, they were in different groups in this Premier League, but they certainly go back a few years in the top tier gambling? I would guess they haven't had a lot of history. They might have played on a high stakes cash yeah. game once or so, but Patrick is going to make the call. 
And Tony G finally getting some action on the Kings. Let's see if he wants it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ace, ace, oh four. A full house oh for no. Patrick Antonius. <laughs> Mike, we're, we're, this is going to get ugly. I do believe that these cars are going to get shown. And I think that Zasko, who now rests on the top of Tony G's on, chips, check. might find himself out in the dog pound. Okay. Well, let's go and check, check again on the turn. How can he check Kings twice here? Now the three of clubs comes off. Patrick has to make a bet here at this pot, doesn't he? Man's I, checked twice in a row. Check. He's checking He's again. Checked again? Oh no! Tony G's taking the bait! Forty. He took the bait! Well, he took the bait, and now he's going to be so angry because oh, he's, he's hooked. He's, he's not going to see the hand. Obviously, I don't unbelievable know. that Patrick checked the third time there, <laughs> knowing how quick Tony G was checking behind him. Mike, I mean, this this could be the end of Tony. How big is Patrick going to raise right now? When he raises, Tony's going out, I promise you. And Tony's going to be kicking himself for betting here. He checked it twice. He just couldn't stand it a third time. Well, look at all the time. Right now, there's a quiet on the table. There's a calm, and it's only the calm before the storm. Well, look at this. Tony's shaking his head. He knows he's been had. What a what a slippery play by Patrick, and just. Outstanding. I'm trapped, Tony says. I know I'm trapped. Yeah. Look at the size of the raise, too. 140,000. 130,000. I like that. This is just like a frustration call here. Call. That's a bad call by Tony, I think. Patrick's just not going to make a play here in that spot without an ace in that spot at a minimum. Kings. Hold on, Patrick. That's the patience. Oh, he hates that. That could have been his Premier League. I got King. Checked, checked, checked. And the flop just hated him, Mike. Incredible. What a deal of this guy. How could you play the hand any better? Checking three times in a row. Finally, <laughs> Tony takes the bait and fell right in the well. He was drawing dead. Yeah. I don't know who in the pot here. Oh, sorry. She must have three bet to 2,700. Yeah. There we go. Kristen yeah. raises to 1,200. Lauren three bet it to 3,700. And John Cold called the uh, two fours. He limped and then oh, called. Oh, look at four on the flop. And a king. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Poor Lauren. <laughs> Poor Lauren. This is going to be very tough luck for Lauren here. She picked up two aces and got no action. Now she's got top pair after three betting it for the flop. And John hopped the fence. For the 3,700, flopped a set. He gave a big sigh as he called there. Yeah. If she was paying attention, she could read that as a tell. When people give those kind of sighs, usually they got a big hand. That might save her. No. She's going to go all in here. No. Well, she's only got 25K left. Yeah, she is going to get all her chips in at some point. There's 29K in the pot already. She hates that card so much, she's trying not to put him in, but she's going to have to anyway. Yeah, well, you got to hate that card. Ooh. <laughs> More theatrics from John. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. He is going for the Oscar, folks. <laughs> but, you know, with a possible flush throw out there, this is the way he's going to make the most money by checking on the turn here. Now she probably thinks she's got the best hand here with two kings and a queen kicker. She should bet about 7,000 here and then throw it away if he moves in. Put a little blocker bet out there. I think that's a pretty good idea. Come on, man. Call. Yeah. Yeah. Have? yeah. A set of fours. Oh. That was a good check on the turn I by said. John. You got to give him credit. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that is just tough luck. Yeah. You three bet, you flop top pair like that. 
You run into a small okay. set. What time is it? We have half an hour left? Ah, well, this is an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, this flats. Two very strong hands, heads up. <laughs> Ace, king, four. Those yeah, checks. Expect Alex to check back. I'll bet here. He's going to bet. I think he'll bet 13. Oh, I can't say it once okay, you've seen it, Luda. Come oh, on. What's wrong with that? Come on. Everyone knows you're a genius already. Okay. You don't have to fudge it. Just a call. Turn card. Ten of diamonds would have been nice. Because Phil expects us to go check, check. Does check through. Oi, oi. Oh, wow. That's what you call the nuts. 70 million chips in the pot. I've always checked it. Interesting check here, Ludo. Um, I guess he has quite a lot of 10x. Right, you can check all his gut shots on the flop. Makes a pair. So you're going to want to check the nuts to protect that, and also, you know, you are going to list some bluffs here, aren't you? This one here is interesting because he's trying to get like a king to fold, but that doesn't make much sense. So like he's trying to get some sort of flush draw, straight draw that got there with a ten to fold. Right. That's some, yeah, a lot of ten x here. Yeah, so it's an interesting one, or maybe he thinks it's like a merge where he gets him to call with some sort of four. I don't know, I'm saying like it's quite interesting. I think I like to just check the pocket eights here. You've still got some showdown and you've not really got a good hand to bluff with. Yeah, obviously you have a diamond which isn't block some of those missed draws as well. Miss yeah, this is this is I think I would just be checking this back, Ludo. Just yeah, you still beat like a four and also like let's say that it's four or five or something and maybe turn that into a bluff. Right, yeah. Or let's say he has like ten jack or like well, that's what I'm saying. If he's got a hand, like, he could maybe turn that into a bluff. Or queen ten. Now he could bluff with these hands. No, I'm not too sure because that might. Uh, I'm not sure. They might have a bit too much showdown value as well. Because why wouldn't they just bet an ace again on the turn? So like, yeah. a king here's in a good position. So like, he's not really betting forty six million to get a king to fold. No, and this, and is, and an, king, this is an easy call with a king. A king might well have led as well. The river himself, oh, wow. right? Of course, does move all in. Now, obviously, like, this isn't a good hand to call with because you're blocking, like, eight, ten of diamonds, all these type of hands. Right. That you want them to... Obviously, you don't want them to have because he beats you with a pair of tens. But yeah. the way the hand's played, it's pretty messy. It's a, it's a messy hand, heads up here. Like, the way this hand's went, uh, you don't get to see hands like this that often. So it's, like, hard to, like, kind of commentate and be quite precise in certain departments because... Right. Obviously, the value hands he reps are yeah, it's just basically queen-jack. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Well, Foxy's obviously thinking and about it here. five, I suppose, as well. He must be thinking he might have four or five that he's turning into a bluff. Or, or as you say, ten jack. jack queen, queen ten, maybe. Jack four of diamonds. Queen four of diamonds. Right. Like something that doesn't need to bluff the river because or, it's or got queen, showdown. Queen, queen three, jack three of diamonds as well. Yeah. So, pair. like, okay, so we've got, like, we could say, like, he's got showdown with, like, jack four of diamonds, jack three three of diamonds, queen three of diamonds, queen four of diamonds, and then maybe you can put in some like three five suited hands, like four five. Right, and if the only hand that check raises all in for value, it'll the only hands that do it, what, a uh, set of fours, um, is, but set, also set of fours and queen jack, are there, any, are there other hands? 
but the thing about this as well that Alex will be thinking, I'm pretty sure he's going to throw it away, but I'm saying, like, the only thing he's going to be thinking about this situation is when I bet so much into the river, 46 into 17, he shoves all in, he's basically only repping Queen Jack. Yeah. So how many combos of Queen Jack is there? Right, there's, there's not many compared then, to the combos. Of so these. that's what I'm saying. So if you start throwing in like the Jack four of diamonds, Jack three of diamonds, the Queen three of diamonds, the four of five, all the type of hands, there's more combos of those than there is of the Jack Queen. So right. that's maybe where he's getting himself well, leveled in his head. I suppose there's not. Wait, well, he has called. Ludo, he oh, has he's called. called. Yeah. And that is the nuts insane. Hits the table, and that's it. That's oh, that's insane. But saying, that's obviously what he was expecting if he was beat. Wow. Was the hand yeah. Queen Jack? Wow, and yeah, just yeah. like that.